Papa, can we play outside? No. Why? Because it's five o'clock in the morning. It's too early. Why? The sun hasn't come up yet. Why? I don't know. Why? Why don't you know, Papa? Because I didn't pay attention in school, okay? I didn't listen in class. I just wanted to do a, a funny show, so it felt like if I can just do what I do on stage doing stand-up in scenes with other actors, as long as there's an audience, I'm comfortable. What we're doing here is trying to sort of funnel a sitcom through the head of Louis C.K. We can add a little bit more to what I say to the guys about how disgusted I am with, mm -hmm. that I did it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And when it gets through that filter, it comes out different than maybe what you might see somewhere else. Why do you lie? So she won't know what a piece of shit she's married to. <laughs> Doing it for her. It's unlike any other project I've seen this past season. And it's risky, and I'm attracted to risks. When you first start out, you think, wow, a sitcom is great. And then the more you go on auditions, the more I found that most sitcom scripts I read were just repulsive. They didn't make me laugh. And then you get something like this, the script, and immediately I realized, like, this is really funny. Uh, first of all, how about meeting the cast? Would you like to meet the cast members? Before? Okay. okay, playing the part of Uncle Jerry is Rick Shapiro. Give him a hand, Rick Shapiro. This is Rick Shapiro. To me, Uncle Jerry, was a goofy uncle. It was almost like the one role I let be in the show that was like a traditional sitcom. And then for some weird reason, these casting people brought in old Rick Shapiro, who I've worked with a thousand times. I'm like, Rick, really? And then I watched the tape and he's doing this weird, kind of sad, tragic brother-in-law who's just a misplaced person, who's trying to be part of a family. And I just, he broke my heart. I was like, God, that's just not what I saw. And it's perfect. In their mind, he's a retard, but he's a visionary. And he sits alone in his apartment in flames, miserable, with nothing. But he's got great thoughts. I thought you said only princesses were invited. And then we have Mike Haggerty, who plays Mike, Mike Haggerty. <laughs> Mike, Mike plays my boss in the muffler shop. I'm his boss, and I guess his friend slash, you know, father figure. I mean, I give him advice sometimes. Uh, my wife, Tina, um, and I, we have a very good relationship, uh, basically based on honesty. Laura Keitlinger plays his wife, Tina, Laura Keitlinger. But I think our secret to marriage is we have sex all the time. We never talk, we just fuck. Jim Norton plays Rich. Give him a hand, Jim Norton. <laughs> Jim is my other friend on the show. He's a, uh, he deals drugs to high school kids. I'm just a horse's ass, uh, basically a pervert who lives at home with his mother uh, in his 30s. I'm a pot dealer. Uh, just basically a shithead who's a poor dresser who contributes nothing. And uh, my whole job is just to smash Louie. I mean, that's all I do is just say awful shit to Louie about Louie. And it's just, it's, there's no better gig for a comic. Who's left? I'm fucking mad. Uh, Jerry Miner plays Walter across the hall. Jerry Miner, he's my neighbor. I think at the beginning of the series, uh, I've just moved in. And um, I think it becomes very obvious that we're the first black family that's lived close to Louie. His wife, Ellen, is played by Kim Hawthorne. How about a hand for Kim Hawthorne? She's very uptight and um, is constantly being annoyed with Louie and all of his mishaps. Kelly Gould, who plays my daughter Lucy. So, you know, watch it. She's a little girl. This is a lot like um, her mom, Kim. And Louie has like, a really hard time handling Kim. And 
I'm just, and my character Lucy is just a mini Kim, so he has an even harder time dealing with me. Kelly, who plays my daughter, she's unbelievable because if you throw something else at her, she'll just go with it. I mean, she's just seven years old and she's like a total genius. And Pamela Adlon plays Kim, my wife. Give her a nice hand, Pamela. The best part is being able to play a character who's really like my own self. Being able to be a mom and drop F-bombs. You fucker! <laughs> and just uh, have real, raw, uncomfortable situations and hear how the audience responds to it. Oh, please. You don't want to eat this. This is all hydrogenated oils. Total crap. <laughs> This is real married life. To me, couples look like me and Louie. It's about a guy who's in a family. He's got a, he works in a muffler shop, a dead end job. He's not even a mechanic and his wife is a nurse. So she's got an actual profession. And since her job has benefits and real pay, she's the one that works full time. It happens in a lot of families. I knew it would be strange because of Louie. I've uh, been in a few of his short films well, you gotta seduce the bastard. You get, you can, and you can't let him make the choice. It's up to you. You gotta just grab him and just, oh, squeeze and hold him and go, oh, God, honey, I love you so much. Oh, baby, I love you. Oh, you like that? Yeah, I like it too. Oh, that feels good. Oh, it feels good to you. Oh, yeah, I like what you're playing my. Oh. For me, it's just, uh, just the honesty. And, uh, I think that comes from a lot of uh, his own life. He puts a lot of his life into the series, and you can tell. What's funny about people is that they're flawed, and that they're jerks or they're silly people, sad. Those things are funny to me, when people are miserable. Yeah, religions are all bullshit. For a bunch of nitwits who don't want to admit that we're all just a bunch of slimy fish who grew legs. For morons who can't accept the fact that there's no God. I haven't invited my mom to any of the, um, tapings yet. <laughs> the one taping I was going to invite her to, they added a scene and I went, I don't think she's coming to that one. Ellen, who are you fucking when I'm not around? about this show is that we're performing it for an audience. It's live comedy. And that's what the sitcoms were that I loved when I was younger. So I wanted something that felt like that, like you can see that the actors are having to stop and stand there because people are laughing too hard for them to continue. Listen, the bathroom above you is busted, so you might get some shit in your toilet that's not yours. <laughs> Don't flush it, because we're trying to track it. This show, it's like doing a play every week. I mean, there's a nice hybrid of, uh, between this and theater. And I come from a theatrical background, so it's, uh, you get a live audience, you know, so you get the uh, response right away. The audience tells you whether it's working or not. We have to have our party. We take the bus all year long. We never eat out. We share deodorant. <laughs> this is the one thing that we do right all year long, and now we can't even have that? So what does that make us? Well, we still got each other. Fuck that shit. <laughs> well, when you get a groan from the audience, you generally know you've gone too far. <laughs> but sometimes those groans are great. They're fun. I come from stand-up. We have a lot of stand-up comedians, um, either who are cast members or who are um, writers. And so a lot of us are very familiar with that kind of performance. And they bring a unique energy, especially when the audience is in. You put an audience and a stand-up in the same room, it's, it's magical. You feel like you're trying it out, and it's just more, more fun. It's, like, it's just great seeing pe people there. And, you know, the girl with the Band-Aid over her eye limping up to me saying, do you have a girlfriend? I don't mean to be rude. Stand-up is hard, but acting to me is like, is scarier because as a stand-up, I know how to bomb. 
and I've done it a million times, every comic has, and when I'm bombing, you go down with dignity. I think they know how to get laughs. They always know how to get laughs. They've spent years developing a character on stage, and uh, the ones who rise to the top are excellent. They're just, you, a sitcom character comes to you fully formed. I mean, what more can you ask for? The only disadvantage to a live audience is if you blow the joke, well, for that take, it's blown because they've seen it. So, yeah, you, you should learn the lines. Was that like a really insightful thing into acting? I just said you should learn the lines? What a fucking asshole. Because we don't have the restrictions that the networks have, we're able to uh, examine different situations. Honey, <laughs> I just got off a double shift. <laughs> Seriously, release the doves. <laughs> we can sort of explore the darker side of comedy. We've been pushing the envelope all week. Pushing the envelope. You're doing the same shit Milton Berle did in 1941. <laughs> And there have been some scripts that I haven't been in that I've been really glad that I haven't been in. <laughs> you know, I went to a Catholic school when I was little. I think it looks different than anything that's ever been on HBO. A lot of HBO shows are uh, very slick and wonderful and cool and funny and award-winning and we're just pigs and shit, hoping we, hoping we can make people laugh. <laughs> All I'm really focusing on is this audience that walks in on that night having really digging the show and recording those big laughs. Sometimes I watch him while things are going on and I must think, wow, this guy is really living his life's dream. I laugh at the show. I help other people laugh at the show. And uh, it's, I think it's, uh, you know, I can't wait till it's on to see what happens. Uh, folks, did you have a good time? Uh, hold on, of course you did. Thanks a lot for coming and have a nice day home safe. Thank you. <laughs> the day you get married, you realize, shit, I can't leave now. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't thinking of leaving, but now I really can't leave. And then you have a kid, and the moment the kid arrives, you realize, shit, I could have left. <laughs> Papa, can we play outside? No. Why? Because it's five o'clock in the morning, it's too early. Why? The sun hasn't come up yet. Why? I don't know. Why? Why don't you know, Papa? Because I didn't pay attention in school, okay? I didn't listen to class. I was high all the time. <laughs>